Welcome to another episode of Times Square Kung Fu. I am your host, Frankie Balboa, a.k.a. the Shaolin Supreme, baby. <laughs> and I'm Peter Glagowski, associate editor over at Flixus.com. Today we're going to be talking about Radiance Films' release of Black Tight Killers. And look yeah, at that sexy box art. This is art. definitely... Oh, we had a blast. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of this director. You know, he gave me uh, some of my favorite um, pinky films. And he did a couple of V Cinema joints. Like I told you, like the um, the organized freaking violence, blood thing, whatever that thing is, four parts of them things. <laughs> and of course, fossilized wilderness, man. So yeah, it's a lot of talk about this director. And let's kick this episode off. So yeah, like I was telling Peter, um, I'm a fan of this director. There's some films that he directed that I didn't know he was involved. Like he did um Sukuban Deca Dirty Mary, which is again wow. during that period of the Naikatsu, you know, Roman porno pinky stuff, he did had a strong output. But um I was surprised when I saw to Peter that you haven't seen the Straight Cat Rock series. <laughs> ah. One of my sins here is that I have not seen a lot of Mako Kaiji movies, so <laughs> well, at least you've seen the main ones, but you ain't seen Film of Scorpion, none of that, which this director also did. Yeah, apparently. So this is the first movie I've seen by him, and it's director uh, Yasuharu Hasebe. This is his first movie. So uh, interesting to start at the beginning. So yeah, nah, but definitely um, you started off with a bang because this film is a looker, it's fun, and it's some cool daddy old stuff. Peter, let him know. <laughs> let him know a little synopsis of this joint. Again, borrowing from the movie database, the synopsis for Black Tight Killers is that Daisuke Hondo, a war photographer in Vietnam, meets Yuriko Sawanochi, a stewardess on his plane back to Japan. After drinking with her at a Tokyo bar, he becomes involved in saving Yuriko from assassination by stylish female ninjas. When trying to rescue Yuriko from kidnappers, Daisuke discovers a group of foreigners are hunting for World War II era treasure hidden on an island by Yuriko's father. Yeah, and um, one of the ladies, um, Kieko Masa Masabara, she, <laughs> she was like, "Yes, I, I keep butchering that man." <laughs> but uh, she, um, if you guys are familiar with with her work, y'all know her from you know Tokyo Drifters and the Alo series. And she's barely in this movie. Bill. The true star is the one that you had a nickname for. <laughs> Wait, I can't. Oh my it. god! Where I said she looked like uh, Japanese Liza Minnelli. <laughs> and we kept joking throughout the whole film that there's lookalikes everywhere. Oh, I wish I remembered Especially some of Especially with um, the uh, the actor that plays um Daisuke Hondo Akira. Oh, Akira Kobayashi. Yes. Uh... Yeah, we kept saying, "Yo, he was like Chow Yun here back in the day." And there was that other villain that looked like Lole in this. <laughs> yeah, it was just, we're having fun. Of course, these, this film came out in 1966. But yeah, we could have been like, damn, man, like, it looks very similar. Now, something that me and Peter were saying while watching this film is that it's definitely, it just goes. <laughs> the editing is just like, oh, we not, no exposition here. We're fast forward. Yeah, there's some scenes too where uh, Honda will be talking to one of his associates there and he asks them a question like so how are we going to tackle this and then the cut is when they're literally there doing it and it's like so we're going to do this and you're like holy <laughs> no yeah, downtime they're not, wasting, they're not wasting time you don't see no musical cues doing like a pan transition or a wipe no like one minute they're talking in the streets and they lay in the bed like how the fuck just happened <laughs> You yeah, know? there's some tonal whiplash, I guess, with that. But at the same time, I appreciate that it doesn't screw around. You know, it just gets right to it. The story has constant forward momentum, and you know, it, this is more even just for the visuals. The story's kind of whatever. There are some interesting elements you noted with the World War II era treasure, but mostly you're here for the slick editing and amazing soundtrack. The amazing soundtrack and. What even though the plot is just thin, which <laughs> when we yeah. finish watching the film, you don't need a good plot to have a good film, no. because the messaging behind it was like we're not going to spoil. Was enough to make the whole the whole film make sense, because it was deep. It was some some real 
It was some real shit that you'd be like, I, I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though it was done in a playful manner because you got these five go-go dancing ninjas. <laughs> Essentially. Hence the title of the movie. And then they're trying to go through go-go spots looking for these go-go dancing ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> and vinyl flying. Like, the weapons are, like, so homemade. Like, they use freaking measuring tape. Oh my fencing. god! As swords, yeah. And like, <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is, as silly as that sound, they make it work because the way everybody's acting is just very, it's very pop. It's like you could see, and I mentioned this director an abundance of times already here, but you could see the influences he got in Tarantino. Yeah, I um, mean, a million percent. There is, I would say, some of like Kill Bill ranges from here and maybe even parts of Pulp Fiction you know, it's just and it's the way it's edited too there's a scene specifically where Hondo is imagining Yoriko being chased down by these ninjas and she's running through paper walls and it's just like really yeah, interesting and the visually really vibrant, like, yeah, yeah they keep changing uh, each transition yeah. it's, oh. and again you know a lot of these guys you know under the night you know Katsu um studio they all were like working with each other so when if you guys seen tokyo drifters you haven't criterion did a fantastic blu-ray on it you're gonna see a lot of similarities and the actresses in there as well you know masubata and the colors like i told you radiance releases this thing again in 4k i am buying it just because yeah i mean the i wouldn't say the scan necessarily looks 4k they probably couldn't prove it for that but hdr would definitely be a huge huge boost to this movie like the visuals are already great and it's an amazing looking blu-ray but yeah man <laughs> 4k would be to die for but um overall because again the plot is thin and we're gonna move fast forward with this review because we're going just like the film yeah, might as well go like the movie <laughs> yeah but i like the way the film is is um paced i love how it's in a modern era and they have this old man well, modern to 66 but yes. and apparently the ninja t- <laughs> forgot about him <laughs> until you brought him up yeah this is the old man who was previously a ninja and he's doing ninja shit at some point <laughs> yeah it's just hysterical the way it is there's, there's a few things with the weapons that i don't want to spoil but overall this film is fun the action is something that was typical to the time, especially with like, you know, um, toku shows. Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of Sony Chiba chops and again, flying vinyls used as weapons. But the film looks great. Um, the set design, the cinematography, me, you was constantly could have stopped talking. This thing looks amazing. And a lot of symbolism that you film nerds are gonna find something that doesn't exist, but then realize, hey, the director just did it because it looked cool. <laughs> and you know. I, I want to bring up that island at the end that was in um oh what was that movie uh vengeance of the blood wolf or whatever oh resurrection of the of the golden wolf yeah there we go yeah that it's a, a fascinating finale to the movie and we're really trying to figure out where that island is we're getting close but you know the commentary would have helped but nah but we're not gonna get into that <laughs> you know <laughs> But overall, this release is amazing. Um, I love Radiance films a lot. They make me do blind buys. Like, it is ridiculous. It has a good essay by um, Chris D. And let me tell you something. I was telling Peter about the booklet is that when you start the first three pages, when you get to hear the history on the studio, um, the cast and crew, he's going to mention some books in here that you guys definitely want to pick up. So as always, um, Radiance is like my favorite new label for me. When I look at a release from them, it reminded me of the early 2000s when Criterion started releasing DVDs. And I'm when they actually still gave a crap. Yeah, because <laughs> um, every time you saw Criterion logo, you see a nice cover. You like, you read the synopsis, you want to pick it up. I mean, there's so, I mean, Radiance Films has been so influential now. Like, 88 Films started a Japanese label, and they started also including Obi cars. Yeah. So it shows you that impact of what you know freaking on um, radiance films has started so yeah i mean i say pick it up for me it's a five-star film because the film is fun good music 
pretty ladies. You got woman gogo dancing, and there's some thick Asian woman in there. And I'm laughing. Yeah. We like them thick. Can't so... disagree. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think the film is five stars, but I'm not gonna get into that. I do think it's a very worthy purchase. And if you're like me, who is starting their kind of education in Japanese cinema, this is a pretty important film. It is, and definitely fun. So this comes out as a recording on the 27th from Radiance Films. It is dual region. Probably people in the UK already got it, but it's coming out on the 27th. And of course, we forgot to mention, thank you, MBD, for the review, copy. Jeez. Because you guys have been tremendously amazing and hooking us up with review copies, especially for Radiance Films, man. You know, a lot of these reviews couldn't be possible while there, man. So as always, like, share, and, uh, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be <laughs> leaving that. I'm not editing yeah, around leave. that. <laughs> Keep rolling. Keep rolling, man. Peter, close it out, man. Peace. <laughs> leave all of that. Put some caption like, woo, I need some water. <laughs>